In this example, we want to find the steady state response of a system when the mass one, which is this one right here, is excited by a force one, which is equals to F one zero cosine of omega t. We will consider that both mass have the same magnitude m and the three springs are equals and have as constant of the spring equals to k. The equation of motion of the system will have this form. We have done this problem in the narrated lectures where you would have to do the free body diagram of each of the masses at forces in the horizontal direction and then you will get these equations. The mass matrix is diagonal and then the stiffness matrix is not diagonal but is symmetric. This is the generalized coordinate vector and this is our force vector. The second step was finding the response. As you know, the response of a harmonic force will have the same form. We have to find the magnitude and the frequency will be equal to the force in frequency. If we derive this equation twice, we can input these two functions into our equation and get this equation right here. Introducing the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix, we get this equation right here. This is what is called the mechanical impedance of the system. The mechanical impedance of the system is a function of the characteristics of the system and the force in frequency. The step three, and is the final step of this method, is to invert this matrix to get the amplitude of the response. You can go to the review of metrics to remember how to invert a matrix two by two. We have to calculate the determinant of this matrix and that will give us this expression right here. We can demonstrate by finding the eigenvalues of the problem that these are the two natural frequencies. As you see, when we calculated the determinant, this value looks like the square of the first natural frequency and this value over here looks like the square of the second natural frequency. Therefore, we can write that the determinant has this form over here. Therefore, the amplitude of the response is the inverse of the matrix times the forcing vector. We multiply the first row by the vector to get the first response, and we multiply the second row by the vector to get the second amplitude. We can manipulate this expression right here by dividing by the first natural frequency, which is the square root of k over m, and we get this expression right here. Remember that when the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency is called the frequency ratio. We can plug the amplitude divided by the static deflection in terms of the first frequency ratio. As you see here, we have a positive response and here a negative and this a negative response. But if there is one point where the amplitude becomes zero. As you will see in the next presentation, this is a key aspect to design what is called a vibration absorber. When the response is negative, it means that it has a phase angle of 180 degrees respect to the forcing frequency. When we analyze the amplitude of the second mass, we see that for the same frequency that the first mass had an amplitude equals to zero, we do have a here an amplitude of finite dimensions. Another important aspect is that the response for both masses go to infinity when the frequency becomes the natural frequency of the system. Those are the two points of resonance of our system of two degrees of freedom. We can also draw these responses as an absolute value of the magnitude. And we know that we will have some phase angle when the magnitude became negative. But as an absolute value, we clearly see that for the two natural frequencies, the amplitude becomes infinite. And here, for one of the frequencies, the system has an amplitude equals to zero for the first mass, and an amplitude, a finite value, for the second mass. 
We like to solve the same problem by using the second method, which is the principal coordinate. So we have the same system with two equal masses, three springs that are also equal, and the harmonic force is applied to the first mass. The first step is the finding the equation of motion. We already discussed how to get this equation of motion. The second step here will be finding the natural frequency of the system, and that's the solving this determinant. These determinants give us the characteristic polynomial, and it's a second order degree polynomial that if we apply the quadratic equation, we get the solution. These eigenvalues represent the natural frequency squares. Then, if we take the square root of the eigenvalue, we get them two natural frequencies of the system. Once we have found the eigenvalues and the natural frequencies of the system, the following step is to find the eigenvectors which represent the vibration modes of the system. We do that by introducing the eigenvalue into our matrix and solving for the amplitude of the equation. We do that for the first mode, and we get these two equations. As you know, those two equations are the same equation, therefore the only thing that we can do is find a relation between these two amplitudes. If we set up the first amplitude as equals to 1, the other one will be also equals to 1. So this is the first mode of vibration. What does it mean? That the two masses move in the same direction with the same magnitude. We do the same for the second eigenvalue. We introduce it into our matrix and find the relation for the second set of amplitudes. Here the same, we can only find a relation between those two amplitudes. So we set up the first one to one and we find that the second one is negative one. So it means that both masses move in the opposite direction with the same magnitude. When we have found both modes of vibration, we can go to the next step, which is constructing the moral matrix. Remember that the moral matrix, the columns represent the modes of vibration or eigenvectors. Now we do the change of variable that we make the generalized coordinate equals to the modal matrix times the principal coordinates. We introduce that into our equation of motion and multiply both sides of the equation by the transpose of the modal matrix. This is the modal matrix that we found. This is the transpose. In this case, both are equal. This is my mass matrix and this is my stiffness matrix. The next step is to do the multiplications of the matrix. The Matrix for the principal coordinates will be this one right here, and the matrix for the stiffness will be this one right here. We also have to get the forcing vector in terms of our principal coordinates, and we have to multiply the forcing vector by the transpose of the modal matrix. These are the results of our multiplications. As you see, both matrix are diagonal. It means that we have been able to decouple the system of equation. The equation of motion in principal coordinates is this one right here. As you see, this represent two system of one degree of freedom each. They are independent to each other. The first natural frequency or the natural frequency of the first equation will be the square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass, which gives me this this natural frequency. Natural frequency for the second equation would be the square root of k over m, and that gives me square root of 3k over m, which is the second natural frequency. Those two natural frequencies are the same as the ones we got when we solved the problem of eigenvalues. The next step is to find the response of each of these equations in principal coordinates. We know that the response of a one degree of freedom system to harmonic response has this form, which is the static deflation times the magnification factor cosine of omega t minus a phase angle. And the same for the second principal coordinate. We have a magnification factor that will be a function of the frequency ratio, and the frequency ratio for the first 
principal coordinate is omega over omega n1 and the second is omega over omega n2. Now that we have the response in principal coordinates, we want to find the response in the generalized coordinates, x1 and x2. So we have to go back to our change of variable equation and we multiply our response in principal coordinates by our modal matrix. That gives us that the response of the first mass is a combination of the two modes and the response of the second mass is also a combination of the two modes of vibration. Combining them two gives us these responses right here. Combining these two expressions, we get that the amplitude for the first mass will have this form and the amplitude for the second mass will have this form. We are expressing everything in terms of the first frequency ratio and the second frequency ratio will become 3. That's where this 3 comes from. And we get the same solution as when we solve this problem using the generalized coordinates.